On ABC 24 this week, I'm Richard Ransom along with Reverend Kenneth Whalum, Chris Tudor, and Otis Sanford. Let's talk about school vouchers. Governor Lee, of course, wanting to expand the program. We have a graphic made of exactly what he's looking to do. Up until now, uh, basically, there were scholarships offered for those who attended low-performing schools. 10,000 scholarships for the disabled and low-income folks would continue. The goal to help those where the parents kind of feel trapped, their kids' school isn't doing very well, to be able to take uh, about $7,000 in taxpayer money and use it toward private school tuition. Well, now now he wants to add 10,000 more scholarships that could be used for any public school student statewide. Still, not a lot of kids potentially impacted here, but uh, people, uh, especially the suburban school districts, are fearful what this could mean down the road. And this week, we had, I think, all six suburban districts in Shelby County, uh, Arlington, Bartlett, Collierville, Germantown, Lakeland, and Millington all coming out against the expanded program in one form or another. And let's let uh, Governor Lee now respond uh, to what the, some of the criticism he was getting in defending school vouchers. Educators at New Hope Christian Academy here today uh, in Shelby County to, just to talk about the opportunity to provide parents the power to make a choice about where their kid is educated. Well, I mean, I think when you when you look at that, you know, most states have said you need... That was Cameron Sexton, the House Speaker, too, is also apparently on board with this. Reverend Whalum, I know you've been an outspoken supporter of school vouchers. What are your thoughts now about this expansion? Thanks for cutting uh, the speaker off. <laughs> uh, I am wholeheartedly in support of the vouchers. They're, they're called parental choice vouchers, and it gives parents the opportunity to choose to send their children to a private school. Now, it, I'm, I'm tickled to see that all of the suburban districts are suddenly against it. Why? Well, because it takes money to run these public schools. And if you take the money and let the money follow the child, then that particular portion of money is going to come out of the public school system, out of the LEA. I understand that. But the public schools are not responsible for educating every child in the district. Public schools are responsible for educating every child that's in public school. The money, the funding from the state is to go to the child. And the child should be able to go wherever they want to, even homeschooling, and, and vouchers can be applied to homeschooling, mm -hmm. to get the best education they can. But we've got a serious problem in professional education. you got salaries to pay, you've got buildings to keep up, and that takes money. And that's why these districts, these suburb suburban districts now, are opposing it, because they understand the same thing, and it's the same reason Shelby County Schools oppose it, because they want to keep that money. But you can't, on one hand say we are for the kids we support the children but only if they come to public schools I don't but think that's those right. public school systems who get the public tax dollars are held accountable in a lot of ways that and the private schools are not Otis I know this is a oh, yeah yeah but but it's the children the parents make the choice if the parents want their children to go to a school uh, where they're not held to the same that's the parents choice but now check this out the public school boards who oppose vouchers are the ones who have to approve charter schools let's say and they oppose charter schools too it doesn't make any sense to me okay well let's, let's do another 30 minutes <laughs> right, we, 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 need it. we may we need, need to it. But I, I, Ken and I are disagreeing on this and, and I don't have a fundamental disagreement with certainly private schools or charter schools or any other kind of schools, but we're talking about taxpayer money. We're talking about my money. Uh, and we already have uh, the legislature, uh, Cameron Sexton, who was against vouchers before he was for it, uh, talking about taking federal dollars away from education in Tennessee. I mean, all of this state meddling into local education, I think is being is counterproductive. I use that word again. Um, the standards, I do think, are the big issue here, because you're not going to tell uh, a Briarcrest or any of these other schools, the one they were at uh, uh, the other day, what they can and cannot do the way you tell the public schools. And so it is accountability. Yes, it's the money. I agree with that. But it is also the accountability or lack thereof that these private schools don't have to deal with that public schools do. Chris, we got one minute left. All right, I'll jump in. A few points. One, um, it is our tax dollars, but ultimately I look at it as returning money to the taxpayer. Everybody t pays taxes, and um, 
if this money, if this voucher is coming back to the parents, I see that as a return of the money that the government was holding uh, in trust. Brilliant. I think Brilliant. the second thing is, is that we are comfortable allowing private institutions to provide services with public dollars. We subsidize health insurance across the board in this country. I don't get angry that someone takes a health insurance subsidy and then go, goes and gets health, uh, health care at a Catholic hospital or at a private orthopedic clinic or at a, uh, or at a public hospital. We are comfortable. We do that all the time in different arenas. The last thing I'll say is it's about the parents. The children were not made for the school system. The school system was made for the children. Par we need equipping parents to make the best decision for their child. And look, I'm a pr proud product of local public schools. I get it. I'm sympathetic to the, the points of these school boards. But at the end of the day, I think those principles are paramount. That's our tax dollars. We, we should have the ability to control our, our children, go to school regardless of income, regardless of zip code. I love it. I, I think it's going to be great. Okay, we'll have to end it there. Unfortunately, yeah, we'll to. I want this to, I want this <laughs> I to continue. I got a lot more to say. <laughs> well, well, we will continue the conversation, I promise. Uh, that's going to do it for us. I want to thank my panel here for being here, and thank you at home as well. We'll see you next week for ABC 24 This Week.